Welcome to Planet Mule. This video will help you get started on your first game of Mule. This is the screen you see after starting a new game. You can wait here for other players to connect or add computer opponents. Mule is best played with four players, but in this tutorial, two players will be enough to show you the essentials. Press J on your keyboard to join the game yourself. Press A to add a computer player. Now press your button to start the game. The default button is the spacebar. Our heroes are landing on the alien planet Irata. They have been sent here by the Federation to establish a colony and extract the valuable resources of this planet. This is the summary, or scoreboard. The goal of the game is to get the highest total score after 12 rounds, be the most successful colonist, or, if you play cooperatively, maximizing the overall colony wealth. Your score is the total value of what you own, that is, your money and the market value of your goods. All players start with $1,000 and 4 units of food and energy. You should use this to build factories and try to increase your fortune. At the start of each round, players are granted a plot of land by the Federation. Press your button when the land you want to claim is marked. We've selected a river plot. The river is great for food production. Our opponent selected a plane, which is the best place to produce energy. During development, you build factories on your plots to produce the goods you need. But watch out, you only have a limited time to do this. Your worker requires food, and if you haven't got enough, your development time will be shortened. At first, only three units of food are required, but the need will increase in later rounds. We want to build a food factory on our river plot. To do so, first buy a mule or multi-usage labor element. Use the arrow keys and walk to the mule corral. Then outfit the mule in the food equipment shop. Now walk to your plot and press the spacebar to deploy the mule. The production value of this plot is 4, the maximum, which is indicated by the 4 fields of grain. We shall now end our turn by gambling in the pub. Strangely, everyone wins when gambling. The amount won is proportional to the time you have left. Now watch what our opponent does in his turn. A colony event occurs each round. These can be either good or bad. This time it was good for our opponent since it boosted his production. Your factories need energy to produce. As our food factory powers up, it uses one of our four available energy units. Great! We've produced some extra food indicated by the counters that popped up on our plot. Now it's time for the auctions. This is where you trade goods with other players or the store and try to make a profit. The Smith Ore auction is skipped since there is no Smith Ore available. Smith Ore is best mined from the mountains. The Christite auction is skipped since neither player has any Christite and the store doesn't sell Christite. Christite is valuable but spread seemingly random in underground contours. The only way to be sure it's possible to extract Christite from a plot is to use an assay robot. Here we see how much food each player had at the start of this round. Now the food used to feed our worker is withdrawn. And then our production is added. So this is the result to trade with. The number in the display under your player shows if you have a surplus or shortage. 
we see that we have a surplus and the opponent has a shortage. Therefore, we should try to sell some units to the computer player. We step down to set the price we want to sell at. Obviously, we want to sell at a high price. The computer moves up to meet our price and the trading starts. When our food reaches the critical limit, that is, the amount of food needed next round, we are automatically moved out of the auction. We began with four energy. Then, one energy was used to power our food factory. Also, one energy is spoiled. Both food and energy spoil if we keep too much of them between rounds. We have enough power to supply three factories next round. Let's say it's enough and don't buy any more. Our opponent now has to sell his surplus to the store for the lowest price, otherwise much of it will spoil in the next round. The price of goods varies with supply and demand. If the colony produced less energy than needed to power all factories, the price would go up. On the other hand, if the colony produced more energy than needed, the price would go down. The food price depends on the amount needed to feed all workers. The smith ore price depends on the number of mules in store compared to the number of unexploited plots. Christite, however, is sold off-world and the price is random. You can read more about the game's economics in the How to Play guide. So this is the result after one round. We're currently in the lead. However, the leading player runs a higher risk of bad events, while the last player has a higher chance of good events. All players press the spacebar to continue. Building two factories of the same kind next to each other gives a bonus in production. We can also get a bonus by owning three factories of the same kind no matter where they're located. There's always a chance that the Federation auctions off a plot. Having an extra plot and factory is very profitable, especially in the beginning of the game. Now all players get to bid for the plot. Move up to a price you think is reasonable. Great, we've got it. Now, let's build two smith ore factories next to each other to receive the bonus. This concludes our introductory tutorial. You now know enough to get started on your first game of Mule. We recommend that you go back to the How to Play guide and learn more after playing a few games. Good luck and have fun!